Good morning, Cornerstone. Hope you everybody had a great Easter weekend and we're ready to celebrate that Jesus is alive. Today's book that we'll be reading is The Oak Inside the Acorn by Max Lucado. The acorn looked at the world around him. Green hills rolled their backs in the distance. Bright daisies bloomed below him. Above him, a family of puffy white clouds floated through the blue sky. The world looks so big, the little acorn said to his mother. I'm just glad to be right here with you. His mother was a tall, beautiful oak tree. I'm glad too, my little acorn. It's good for you to be here with me now, but when your time comes to go into the world, you'll be fine. Oh, I'll be afraid. Mother Oak hugged little acorn in her strong branches. Within you is a great oak, little acorn. Just be the tree God made you to be. The thought of letting go and leaving the safety of his mother's branches was scary to little acorn, so he tried not to think about it. But deep down inside, he knew the time was coming. One by one, his brothers and sisters had been letting go and saying goodbye. They had been afraid too, but their mother had assured them with the same words, Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Each time he heard this, little acorn would look at himself and say, An oak? In me? He was so small. It was hard for him to believe that he could ever be a tree. Time came to let go, this came sooner than little acorn wanted. It started with a bump. He was resting one summer afternoon, thankful for the coolness in the shadow of the leaves when, thud, the tree shook. His mother's branches trembled, and little acorn began to swing back and forth. A farmer's pickup truck had accidentally backed into the tree. Little acorn had swung before, stirred by the wind, bumped by climbing kids, and each time he'd always held on. But not this time. He tried. He pressed his thin stem into the branch as hard as he could, but it didn't work. He was a heavier acorn than he used to be, and his stem began to pull away from the branch. Uh-oh, Mom! It's okay, little acorn, Mother reassured him. You can't hang on forever. It's time. You've got to let go. Down he fell, flipping over and over, softly slipping through the leaves until he bounced on something hard. He had landed in the back of the pickup truck. The truck vibrated and began to drive away. It's okay, little acorn, his mom called out. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Little acorn barely heard the last few words. The truck was already moving down the road, going somewhere. He just didn't know where. As the truck bounced, so did the acorn. Ouch, he said. This is rough. It gets better, he heard a voice say, rolling over. Little acorn looked up at a young tree. Who are you? I'm a new little orange tree on my way to be planted. What do orange trees do? asked the acorn. By now the road was much smoother. We grow oranges. Oh, answered little acorn. He didn't know what an orange was and what just a... Uh, to ask when the truck slowed to a stop. Wow, exclaimed the orange tree. Who was tall enough to see out of the truck? What is it? asked the acorn. Trees, orange trees, everywhere. It's an orange grove. Okay, little orange tree, it's time for you to be planted, the farmer said as he lowered the truck tailgate and climbed into the back of the truck. The acorn rolled away just in time to avoid the farmer's big boot. The farmer took the tree and was gone for a long time. Little acorn stared at the sky as it began to darken. He missed his mother and her strong branches. This would be his first night away from her. The tailgate banged and the farmer jumped in. A quick sweep, he said, and I'll be headed home. Little acorn had never seen a broom. He barely saw this one before it sent him high in the air and he landed in soft dirt. I wondered what happened to you. It was Orange Tree. 
Little Acorn was happy to hear a familiar voice. Is this your new home? It sure is, Orange Tree said. And it looks like it's your new home, too. Little Acorn had one more question. Orange Tree, well, what do I do next? Orange Tree's voice was sleepy. Just settle in, little friend, and rest. God will make you grow. And so Little Acorn did just that. He rested. That night, that day, the week, the month, there in the soft soil surrounded by orange trees, he sank deeper and deeper into the ground and slumbered. He slept a long, long time. When Little Acorn woke, he didn't know where he was. He was stretched upward, and when he did, he kept stretching higher and higher until he popped out of the dark dirt into the sunlight. Well, look who's awake, announced Orange Tree. Little Acorn looked around and then up. Oh, hello, Orange Tree. Have I been sleeping long? Long enough to become a small tree. Little Acorn looked down at himself and said, Oh, I've changed. His round shell was now a slender trunk. You're growing up, Orange Tree said. Now you're a little oak. Little Oak straightened himself and remembered his mother's words. Within you is a great oak. Maybe she was right, he thought. And he stood a little bit taller. But even at his tallest, he was much smaller than the big orange tree. Their bushy branches grew greener and greener. And then one day, Orange Tree called out to his friend, Little Oak, look, my first orange. The big orange tree spoke up. He'll have many more, they said. So will I, announced Little Oak. The trees in the grove laughed. They didn't mean to hurt Little Oak's feelings, but they did. You'll never have oranges, they said, chuckling. Little Oak straightened his branches and pushed as hard as he could, but no oranges popped out. Not that day, nor the next, or the next. When the farmer came to collect the fruit, Little Oak was worried. He had none to give. Well, hello, Little Oak, the farmer greeted. How did you get here? The farmer walked away, and when he returned, he was carrying a big shovel. I know just the place for you. He lifted the new little oak tree out of the ground. Bye-bye, my friend, said the orange tree. The farmer didn't take a little oak too far away. He carried him out of the grove to his big white house. The farmer chose a spot in the backyard overlooking the orange grove. Let's see how you do here, he said. Then he dug a deep hole and set Little Oak inside it. He placed dirt around the Little Oak and pressed it tightly around the tree's roots. Little Oak liked his new home. For the first time, he stood taller than almost everything around him. Little Oak was stretching his roots in the dirt when he heard, Hi, I'm Pink Petunia. Who are you? Little Oak looked over at the bright flower near the house. He started to answer, but... Pink Petunia didn't give him time. Rosie's next to the house. Hi there, Rosie, chirped. Uh, Daisy's here too. That's me, said a white and yellow flower. Hello, little tree. Pink Petunia continued. We are soft and smell sweet. What about you? Little Oak didn't know how to answer. He knew he had no oranges. Do you grow flowers? Pink Petunia asked. Little Oak never remembered seeing flowers like roses or petunias on his mother. But still, maybe oaks did grow flowers. Uh, maybe I could. Maybe that's what I'm made to do, he answered. So he tried as hard as he could. Little Oak tried to grow flowers like his friends could grow. As the sun grew hotter, they unfolded into a rainbow of pinks and reds and yellows. Little Oak, however, just grew taller. As the days grew, his roots grew deeper. Every day he tried to grow colorful flowers, but he never could. Pink Petunia could, so could Rosie, so could Daisy, but not Little Oak. Finally, Little Oak decided to rest. His branches were tired and drooping. His leaves were drooping. Even the flowers were sleepy. We're going to rest now, Little Oak, the flowers told him, and they did. The sky grayed and the, the days shortened and the whole garden slept. While Little Oak slept, he dreamed. 
He dreamed of his days as a little acorn on his mother's branch. Deep in his sleep, he heard a soft voice. Within you is the great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. When the sun warmed his branches, little oak awoke. Only he wasn't so little anymore. He could see further. He had grown taller and wider. The winds didn't bend him as much. The branches were as big as his trunk used to be. Little oak was becoming a big oak. Many years passed, and each year he grew bigger and wider, wider and bigger, until everything in the farmer's yard looked up to him. Right there, there he is. Oh, he's a lot bigger. He's getting even bigger still. Look at that, look how big he's getting. Now Orange Tree and the flowers called him Big Oak. He spread his big branches and looked around. Orange Tree was taller too, but not as tall as Big Oak. Big Oak was taller than all his friends. They were wide, but not as wide as Big Oak. He was the tallest. He was the widest, but he still wondered what he was supposed to do. He couldn't grow oranges or flowers. He just grew bigger, and he didn't know why. Big Oak was just awakening from a long winter's nap, his leaves and tiny buds, when a young farmer brought two ropes and tied them to one of his strong branches. Close by, a little girl watched. Rosie Rose was puzzled. What is it for, Big Oak? I don't know, Big Oak answered, but soon he found out. Can I do it, Daddy? Can I swing? Go ahead urged the man, and the little girl with bright blue eyes and hair the color of Daisy's flowers sat in the swing. Big Oak felt the tug, but barely. He was strong, and the little girl was small. With her daddy's help, she swung forward. Not too far, but farther the next day, and farther the next. By the time the sun was hot and the flowers were plenty, she could swing alone, kicking her feet higher and higher, until she could see the roof of her house. Then back down she would swing, back until she seemed to look straight at the ground. Big Oak loved the sound of the little girl's laughter, her footsteps running towards him, her squeals of delight as she swung higher and higher into the sky. Yes, Big Oak loved the little girl. When she swung, he stood strong. When her daddy built her a tree house in Big Oak's branches, Big Oak gladly held it. When the little girl stretched out on the grass to watch the clouds float, Big Oak shaded her. She played in his branches, climbed his trunk, rested in, her, uh, rested in his shadow, and together they grew. Each year, both taller, each year, both stronger. When gray skies brought cold days, Big Oak slept and swung, and the swing hung silently, and the playhouse was empty. When blue skies brought warm days, they laughed and played. Little girl talked, and he listened. And at last, Big Oak knew he had become the tree that God had made him to be. Big Girl now stood as tall as the Big Oak's lowest branch. One day, Rosie Rose said to Big Oak, She's growing up, Big Oak. She'll leave soon. Big Oak didn't have an answer, but he understood. Big Girl spent many blue sky days sitting on the ground, leaning back against the Big Oak's trunk and watching the clouds drift by. Big Oak knew Big Girl had a big question on her mind because she said things like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be, and it's hard to let go, and how can I know who I am? Big Oak wanted to talk to Big Girl. He knew just what to say. He would say, within you is a great girl. Just be the person God made you to be. Orange trees grow oranges, he would say. Flower plants grow flowers. And oaks? Oaks grow tall enough for swings and strong enough for swinging and big enough to hold little girls until they become big girls. He wanted to. But he couldn't say the words. 
One day, Big Girl was so sad. The little girl who used to giggle in Big Oak's shade just sat, silent tears flowing down her cheeks. It's hard to let go, she said. Big Oak was listening, and he had an idea. He looked down at his branch at a little acorn. I have a special job for you, Big Oak said. The next time the wind blew his branches, Big Oak let his branch shake more than the others. The little acorn popped loose and landed in the big girl's lap. Big girl picked it up and started to toss it away, but stopped. She held the little acorn in her hand and stared at it. She turned and looked up at Big Oak. Were you ever this small? Answering her own question, she continued. Well, of course you were. You grew into a great oak from a little acorn. All you did was become what God made you to be. She looked again at the acorn, then back at the tree. Her eyes brightened. Do you suppose that's what God wants me to do? Big Oak wanted to shout, yes! But he didn't have to. Big Girl stood and announced, of course he does. Now it's time for me to let go and become the person that God has made me to be. Big Girl smiled placed the acorn in her pocket, and began walking away. But after a few steps, she stopped and turned. She looked at the swing, the treehouse. She looked at Big Oak. She walked over to him and placed a hand on his trunk. Without a word, she said goodbye. Without a word, Big Oak said the same. The end. Now, I love trees, and I love this book. And scripture shows us that each one of us is a special creation made by God, and he has special and big things for each of us. But we shouldn't try to be other people. We should know that we're loved by God and be who he made us to be. That's a long journey, and he'll help us every step of the way. Let's pray. God, thank you for this story today. Thank you that we get to begin our week of remote learning, knowing, God, that you have made each one of us. We're special we're unique. There's only one of us, and you've designed us to grow up to be the people that you've designed us to be. Help us trust you in that, Lord. I pray this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Cornerstone, have a fantastic week. Love you guys.